Christ really is an authority issue. However much you want people to think Christianity is cool and put no obstacle in the way of people believing, you can't get away from this. The call of the kingdom of God is an authority issue. And if you aren't presenting it like that, you aren't presenting it. Jesus came in Mark 1.15. His primary message at the beginning and throughout his ministry was that the kingdom of God is at hand. And because God was coming back to reign as king, people needed to repent and believe the good news. Now let's be honest, we can easily feel that that's a problem to us. What is the problem all people have with this? There's no escape from the fact that Jesus came proclaiming the kingdom of God, which doesn't sound very cool. But why do people have such a problem with that? Well, the biggie, of course, is that our fallen human nature is rebellious by nature. It started off, it was formed, in rebellion against God. And rebellion has been an essential part of human nature ever since. Then there's the hurdle of human insecurity. At a cognitive level, it's often a sense of terrifying insecurity, the fear of yielding the sovereignty over our frail lives to someone else that lies at the root of the problem. How can people trust God with the wheel of their life? Life is big and it's scary and it's dangerous. Do you know, I'm bothered enough about my own driving, so why should I trust my life to somebody else's driving? No thanks, control freakery does it for me. Step away from the levers, they're mine. There's also a problem of misunderstanding of confusion of concepts, of course. A world of difference exists between having an issue with authority and having an issue with authoritarianism. Jesus was clearly well up for authority. He preached the kingdom of God. But he warned his disciples powerfully against the sin of authoritarianism. We might have to come back to that one. Why do people have a problem with authority? Well, then, there's the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. The assumption of our society is that self-actualization, self-realization, depend on the sovereignty of the individual as expressed in the absolute sanctity of individual choice. Now, the peer pressure behind that one is enormous. Possibly the thought of friends yielding their self-determination to a deity leaves those who don't think it's safe feeling quite insecure and piling on the pressure to stop it. In reality, this myth of individual sovereignty, the sovereignty of the individual, is just a myth that needs to be exposed. Our choices and our power to implement them are in reality limited in the extreme. We definitely do have some choices, but the extent to which we can control our lives and be the master of our destiny is actually limited in the extreme. So given this situation, beyond prayer and the work of the Holy Spirit, which alone definitively address the spiritual roots of our natural human rebelliousness against God, what possible means can deal at the cognitive level with this authority issue that hinders people coming to real faith? What should characterize our approach to people in this situation? Firstly, it might make sense to try to explain the helplessness of human nature. If choice is in real life a mirage and individual self-determination a chimera, then arguably that needs to be exposed in our proclamation of the real life kingdom of God. Will people really repent and believe the good news unless they get this? Our God is the one who's almighty, not us. Maybe we need to really reassert that. Secondly, perhaps we need to be a little less timid about proclaiming that Christ's authority is the hope of humanity. Jesus' approach was just direct. He proclaimed it. Check Mark 1.15. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. He just proclaimed that. And when it comes to the message of the Saviour's outreach, evangelism, life, he just tells it. God is coming back to reign and rule as king in the face of a rebel-ridden world. So he says, just repent and believe before he gets here. There's huge hope in Jesus, but it lies exclusively under his authority. Repentance and faith are going to be required. And what's this repentance and faith going to look like in Mark 1? It would look like following him into being a fisher of people. Explaining the helplessness of human nature in fact, in truth and reality, we're not actually in control. Proclaiming Christ's authority as the hope of humanity. And demonstrating then, thirdly, the authority of God. 
Jesus needs to bring people into the kingdom of God. And he's definitely upfront about that objective. But as soon as he, he has announced it, he sets about directly demonstrating that he is genuinely the king, that his authority is real and not usurped. So, his word of command silences and drives out a demon, Mark 1, 25-26. His authoritative action heals Peter's mother-in-law of a fever, Mark 1, 31. And his word of command then forgives and heals the paralysed man let down by friends through the roof at the beginning of chapter 2 of Mark. Now, the Jewish leaders saw the issue of authority immediately in this. Who can forgive sins but God alone, they demand, very indignantly. And Jesus takes their clearly seen issue head on. I want you to know, he says, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And he turns to the guy on the mat and he says, get up, take your mat and go home. The man stands up, walks out. Jesus has proved the, that he has authority to do what he says he's there to do and everyone was amazed and everyone praised God because in Christ's authority now lay the hope of humanity demonstrating the authority of Jesus Christ are you a believer do you pray with and for unbelieving people why not well how are they going to see his authority if, if we don't forgive me it's an awkward question but it's one that needs to be asked how do we get over this issue that people have with authority and the authority of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God? Testimony, testimony, testimony. We really need to get better at testifying, not just to the credibility, but also to the safety and security of yielding our lives to the call of the kingdom of God, to his authority. We need to be able to give logical reasons for faith, of course we do, but we are so much more than brains walking on sticks. Our souls cry out by nature for much more than just thinking. And that much more comes to us as we live as the citizens of the kingdom of God, safe, secure, finding our place in the world under his actual authority, not careering round in a panic at the frustration of our authority. Then finally, may I suggest, showing how Christ's authority gets exercised against authoritarianism. That Authority and authoritarianism, the difference, lies primarily in the way the power gets exercised. Authoritarianism wrests power from others and uses that power to serve itself. Authority is quite different, and you see it in the lifestyle of Jesus. He doesn't demand authority, he commands authority. He has it, it's his, you can see it, and he uses it to make life better. Not for himself, the way authoritarianism does but for other people who live under his kingship. We need to show Christ's authority gets exercised then against authoritarianism. Peter, following Jesus' earlier teaching, warned starkly against lording it over the flock of God in 1 Peter 5.3. No doubt Christ's words on authoritarianism still rang in Peter's ears. You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them? Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For, and here's the reason, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. You can read that in Mark chapter 10. So, if the call of the kingdom is to be savingly heard, we need to stand up for avoiding throwing out respect for rightful authority, graciously, lovingly, caringly exercised, as if it were a baby adrift in authoritarian bathwater. The call of the kingdom has come. It's absolutely an authority issue.